John helps nonprofits and associations with social media and digital marketing. And he's really the go-to guy for Facebook and actually literally wrote the book, Facebook Marketing for Dummies. He's got a ton of online trainings available, available that he'll tell you about at the end of his session. And he's got a new book coming out in 2017 on online fundraising. So lots of good stuff. And outside of work, John can ride a unicycle as well as a bike backwards, which is uh, very exceptional. So multi-talented guy. So without further ado, John, welcome. Welcome to the Membership Growth Online Summit, and thank you for being here with us today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the invite. We're going to talk about attracting and retaining members uh, using a marketing funnel. So basically, this is a, a process to build um, a funnel where you're effectively engaging people and converting people into members, all right? Now, we're going to cover a couple of topics today, uh, and Lori will actually be monitoring the questions box uh, along the way, so if there's anything that's unclear, I'm going to pause every now and then to answer specific questions, okay? We're going to cover, you know, what is a member funnel, and then we're going to talk about people, human beings, and what makes them decide to do things and take that next step. Okay, and then we're going to go through the process of building a member funnel for your organization. I'm not going to get into the specific software and the technology piece of it, but basically the process and the important components of a member funnel. And then we're going to finish up with five ways to measure funnel health. So first question is pretty obvious. What is a member funnel? Uh, so many of you have seen this image before, I'm sure various versions of a member funnel or a marketing funnel or a sales funnel and it looks like this okay so at the top we're basically attracting and sending people to the top of this funnel using a number of different marketing channels like advertising search engine optimization social media and so forth and at some point we want to capture them so this first part of the funnel is capture then we're going to nurture them now, obviously, a lot of people that say, hey, we're interested, we might capture their email address, you know, and we might send them a few email messages, but not every one of them, of course, is going to become a member, right? We all know that. So that's why the funnel at the bottom is very narrow, right? So you put a lot of people in the top of the funnel and out the bottom, people become members, okay? Kind of forces you to think in a very member-centric way, right? So all too often we think as marketers, and as communicators, we think we've got to get the word out about our organization. If they only knew how good we were, then they would join, right? So we don't really understand the process that they actually go through to make decisions. And we're going to get into that in just a second. The phases of a funnel that we're going to talk about today, the member funnel is a series of traffic sources, landing pages, and emails that work together, right? So this is a, this is a system that we're creating. And what we're doing is we're capturing interest in the form of an email address. So that, that's what, we, what I mean specifically by capture. And then we're going to nurture that interest and build arousal, right? We have to get people excited about becoming a member and what that means emotionally. And then we're going to convert the new members, right? So some of those people are going to be ripe. Other people, they may not be interested in all, but we want to identify those folks and give them the optimal opportunity to become a member. And then, of course, once they become a member, we're getting into the last, the bottom of the funnel, which is really partnering. Okay, so converting is when they sign up as a member. Partnering is when they're now sharing our organization with their friends, you know, hey, you should definitely join this association. You should definitely join this um, this member, this uh, sign up as a member. I did. And look at all these great benefits I did. And you should too, right? So that gets into word of mouth marketing, which most of you know is the most powerful form of marketing that still exists today, okay? Um, <clears throat> so this is a big question that I'm sure a lot of you have asked. Maybe some of you stay up at night saying, geez, if we could only get more people to become members, right? We have lots of Facebook fans, lots of people following us on Twitter. We've got an email list of, you know, umpteen thousand emails, but, you know, only a certain percent of them are becoming members. How can we improve this process? Okay. Well, before we go further, we, we really have to start with the fact that we're dealing with human beings. Okay. We're not dealing with emails. We're dealing with people. Okay. So people today, as you know, if you think about your own life and your own work, you're distracted, 
Okay, you're constantly bombarded with different messages. And not only that, but you have a different agenda every single day. So even though the retailer around the corner from your, your house would love to have your attention every single day, it's probably very rare that you actually give that retailer any attention at all. And it's the same thing with a member. Okay, so your members or uh, current members, you know, soon to be members, they're not thinking about you all the time. They have a lot of things going on. And this is, of course, compounded by social media, right? And mobile. So not, this is a picture of a guy in front of a laptop, but I think what might be a more accurate picture is if he has a smartphone in the other hand, a newspaper, and of course he's pouring orange juice still on his cereal. I don't know if that's a good combination. Um, so we can't, uh, we have to understand that people are really distracted. The other thing we have to really work with is that we can't approach people and say, hey, you should join our, our, our membership. You should, here's why, you know. So if we start coming across and start pushing something too hard at people that aren't even interested, we're not even on their radar, um, you know, we could turn them off, Okay. Now, most organizations, uh, and I've worked with a lot of different nonprofits and, and, and uh, different associations, and all too often the idea is, well, if we just have a link to sign up as a member, and if we list up all the benefits of becoming a member, that's great, right? So, but we're really not responding to their interests, right? So we're basically just kind of spamming or email blasting everyone, taking out a Facebook ad and just trying to get our membership sold to as many people, right? So we're, if we're trying to sell at the top of the funnel, and I'll get into the different phases in a second, we could come across as too salesy or too pushy, okay? Uh, you know, someone's a Facebook fan. This is a specific example. Someone's a Facebook fan and you start saying, hey, join our membership. Hey, you should sign up as a member here. Uh, here's a discount on our membership. You know, people are kind of like, hey, I'm, I'm a Facebook fan here. I'm just, you know, I'm just getting to know you. It's a little too early. OK. And the purpose of the funnel is to honor that those feelings, really, and, and develop a membership a focused approach rather than thinking that we have to get the word out about our organization. Okay. So let's dig into this a little bit deeper now. Uh, let's talk about how do people decide to join. Now, Lori, I just want to ask, are there any questions at this point that are kind of standing out to you? Uh, not yet, John. We're just kind of working on technicalities. So keep going. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Um, All's fine on my end, technical, technically, <laughs> technicality-wise. <laughs> um, okay, great. So let's talk about um, how do people decide to join, right? And I'm not talking about, well, they go to our website and they click on a link and that gives them all the information. I'm talking about people, again. The funnel is, a uh, marketing funnel basically honors the fact that people are individuals, they have all sorts of interests and desires and so forth, okay? And, but generally speaking, um, regardless of how different people are, they generally go through the same stages when it comes to making a decision, okay? And when I'm saying, when I say make a decision, we could talk about getting married, we could talk about buying a new car, uh, re you know, choosing a college to go to, or signing up as a member. It really doesn't matter. All these de uh, decisions follow a very similar path, okay? Now, in terms of consumer decisions, which is really what we're talking about here, a potential member deciding they wanna become a member, right? Uh, there's four phases that we're gonna talk about, and I outlined this in the funnel before. At the top of the funnel, even before everything, even before people convert, um, they become aware of your organization, all right? So these are non-members, they become aware of your campaign or your event, and they become aware because they search something, they do a website search or a Google search, they arrive at your website, they, they see a tweet about a blog post on your website and that seems really interesting. So they become aware of your organization. At some point, they say, yeah, I, I wanna sign up for that free webinar or maybe I'm gonna attend this free event or download this free ebook or some other valuable offer, right? Something that's in it for them they make that decision, well, let me take the next step. Let me find out what else they have. And before we went live today, uh, Lori and I were talking about Trader Joe's and you know, I shop at Trader Joe's. You go into Trader Joe's and of course at the, uh, you know, one of the counters, they always have the free food, 
you know. So this is really the Trader Joe's free food sample approach here where we're capturing people's email. And I'm going to get into this in a little bit more detail, but I'm giving you an overview first. Uh, the next phase, and if you could see up in the top right, we're building a funnel as we go, all right? We're starting from 30,000 feet here, by the way, all right? So I'm just going to back up a little bit. So people become aware of your organization. They join your email list, but really what they're doing is they're downloading a valuable resource or signing up for that really cool free webinar, okay? And then through email messaging, through follow-up emails and drip campaigns, you're kind of piquing that interest, okay? So they attend that free webinar, or they download that free ebook, and automatically they're receiving these emails and these messages that say, hey, uh, if you like that, you might want to check out our membership. In fact, here's a discount code or some other offer where you're kind of nurturing them, right? And eventually, uh, some of them will convert. So when I say convert, I mean they're pulling out their credit card and they're signing up to be a member, okay? And they do that because you've demonstrated some sort of value. First of all, you've given them, um, you know, some, some, something value to begin with. You know, your monthly newsletter, which is awesome, uh, a free webinar, attending an event and so forth. And I'll, I'll share more examples as we go on. And then so they convert. And of course, the last step is that they partner. So they begin to recruit their friends after having a really great experience with your organization. Okay. Um, so let's slow this down a little bit and get into each one of these phases of, of the funnel. Okay. Um, so the first one is become aware. People become aware of your organization. And there are a number of different ways to become aware. Uh, the example that I'm going to propose, and this is just an example, is that um, a member, a current member of your organization, invites a couple of friends to your upcoming event, which is open to anyone. The event is open to non-members, members, whoever it might be. And here's an example on the screen right here, okay? The uh, Young Men's Business League of Austin. Um, so they invite friends, friends attend the event, okay? So that's one example. They might hear about your organization on Twitter, on Facebook, and some other way, but they're not directly connected just yet. They don't, they have not joined your email list. They are not in your database just yet, okay? This is really where awareness sits, okay? So non-members, uh, they don't know about your organization at all until they become aware, that's the, always the first stage. And our goal at this stage is really eyeballs. Um, so what creates awareness? When we're looking to expand awareness about our organization, um, and again, we could dive, we can, uh, in fact, I, this week, there are webinars covering much of what I'm showing you on the screen right now. So what creates awareness? Uh, there are three things in my mind, stories that engage, community that raves, and advertising, okay? So stories that engage, that means your members love these stories, they share them very easily, and they're easy to find, meaning that people can search for you on Google and they could find your really useful information, okay? Community that raves, that means that you have taken really good care of your members, you're doing good community management, good customer service, and then naturally they feel great about you, they wanna tell their friends, about your organization, right? So they create awareness in that, in that way. And then advertising, of course, there's paid reach. There are native ads like on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram promoting an event that's coming up. And there's also Google ads, okay? So advertising enhances the awareness even, even greater, you know, even, even more awareness than that, okay? Uh, now the next stage, so let's say that somebody does become aware uh, the capture phase, and again, we're at the very top of the funnel. And we can see right here, we're starting to build this funnel. The capture phase is when they join the email list, right? Now, let's be really clear about this. No one wants to join an email list, all right? If you have the greatest event in the world and you have uh, you know, a laptop and you say, hey, would you like to join our email list? Naturally, somebody's going to say, well, why? Why should I join the email list? Okay. Um, and so the example that I'm going to share, again, we're going back to this free event that the Young uh, Men's Business League of Austin is having. And uh, these people are invited. They're guests. They become aware of the event. Oh, I'm going to attend this event. And at the event, 
they join your list on a laptop. Okay. So what uh, what I've seen done, and maybe Lori and and uh, everybody, some other people have some examples, is that you know um, get the uh, get the show notes from this event. You know, there's some speakers, presenters. Join our email list, and we will send you all the presentations that have been shared. All right. We'll we'll create a networking opportunity for you. Um, sign up for our newsletter. Um, you know, get discounts from the retailers who are supporting this event and so forth. So there's some sort of offer that the uh, guest sees. And of course, that's the reason that's really the motivator behind uh, joining the list. And you've captured this email. Okay. Uh, so people, generally speaking, people will join your email list when you offer value. Okay. You're offering value. Uh, the expectations are clear. In other words, well, what am I going to get if I join your email list? Well, you're just going to get our monthly newsletter and a few other items and only one email once a week, you know. And, of course, the offer is relevant, too. Uh, so some examples, register for this free event that's coming up, download a resource, attend a free webinar. These are really offers. It's that, uh, going back to the analogy of Trader Joe's, you know, it's the sample, right, just to get their uh, name added to your email list. Now, I'm going to pause here because I know somebody's asking this question right now. Somebody's saying, well, <clears throat> you know, why should we go through all the work of having someone, you know, get our email list? Why don't we just tell them to become a member, right? Well, the, the problem is if we think about the funnel, again, <clears throat> a very small percent of people are going to be that receptive. And we know it, right? If this was not the case, we wouldn't have this webinar. We wouldn't have a need for it. Okay, but the reality is that we know that if we go out and we start to sell our uh, our membership to on Facebook and Twitter and kind of spamming people, to, to, for lack of a better word, uh, you know, it's kind of a turnoff to some people. So what we want to do is we want to identify people that are interested. And w the capture phase is not only capturing the email, but capturing the interest, right? So you're recording that interest. This is someone who is interested in this webinar. This is someone who came to this free event um, that was on this specific topic. Okay. And the next phase is nurture, right? So once someone downloads that uh, free resource or registers for the webinar, of course, you, you have to do your job. You, you've, in a sense, kind of earned the right to sell them your membership. Okay. You've earned the right to sell their membership. They've opted in for something. And there's this implied um, uh, idea of reciprocity, right? So someone joins the list, they, get, they attend the free webinar. Of course, they expect that they're going to hear more about how great your organization is. And this is where it happens. In the nurture phase, you're kind of saying, you're kind of selling the idea of becoming a member. Hey, you're going to love this free webinar. In addition to the free webinar, you're going to get all this other cool stuff if you become a member. Okay? So that's really what we're talking about here. Um, and so, you know, um, we have to, we've earned that right to, um, to, to sell them our membership. We've basically opted in. Uh, the other analogy I love to use here is when you go to buy a car, if you've ever gone to a car dealership and you buy a car, uh, the, the dealer always offers you a cup of coffee, okay? The salesperson will offer you a cup of coffee and if you take the cup of coffee, they know that you're a good prospect, okay? Because there's this implied value exchange that's already been tipped in the salesperson's favor. You know, you they gave you a cup of coffee, so you kind of owe them something else. So the 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 leverage is um, the the leverage is kind of shifted sides in a little bit. Uh, so that's really what happens in the nurture phase, all right? And then so. Um, so the guests at this in during this phase, which is going to happen largely by email, because you have their email address, you're able to send them messages, a few messages via a drip campaign. You can also uh, obviously publish social media updates and personalized offers that are targeted to them using Facebook ads and I'll or any sort of native ad, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. Uh, so at this point, we're going to assume that the guest who has signed up on the laptop, they're receiving special offers to become a member, right? So they go to this event and they get this really cool offer on this laptop. Hey, 
enter your name and email here and you'll be entered to win something, you know, some sort of offer that they're getting. And I've shared several examples before. Uh, so they get that, but they're also receiving other emails, prompting them to sign up as a member. And here's valuable uh, reasons to sign up as a member. Um, so what are we really doing at this phase in terms of building our member funnel? At the nurture phase, our goal is to build arousal and intimacy. We want to uh, send them personalized messages and we want to build up that excitement. In other words, we want to build anticipation and build value or perceived value in joining up as a member. Okay, and this could be in the form of member stories. Um, this could be uh, sharing the member benefits. This could be um, uh, communicating a limited quantity of something. You know, if you register as a member before Friday, you could, you'll be, um, you know, you'll get this extra other resource, uh, which is quite limited. OK, uh, that's that's more so more helpful around uh, physical events where people are going to physical events, because then you can literally say there are seriously a number of limited seats. Uh, so the strategy here is really uh, less email blasting and more personalized email responses. Now, this is really critical here. And this is what uh, software like Wild Apricot and other tools allow you to do is that when someone joins your email list, that contact is tagged a certain way. Either they're added to a specific email list or their contact record is tagged in a certain way or, or a checkbox is added to their contact record. So that now we I've identified this person. This person attended a free event and they will automatically, by using uh, follow-up emails or targeted emails, they will automatically receive a series of, say, two or three emails, um, building up that anticipation and um, selling them on the membership. OK, uh, so the stories, uh, the other thing is uh, stories are targeted to their interests. OK, so, for example, if someone attends an event on a specific topic, the follow up emails, ideally, you want to have them related to that topic that that person was interested in hearing about. OK. And I mentioned native ads and supporting uh, email offers or native ads supporting email offers. So uh, I know for, for a fact Facebook ads, you can actually target a specific email list with uh, what's called custom email targeting. So you create a custom audience within your Facebook ad account and you can actually target them with ads, which is so powerful. Uh, and I've done this with a number of clients. Uh, basically, what you're doing is you're sending out an email message along with an ad supporting that message. So they may or may not see your email message in the inbox, but they will certainly see that Facebook ad. The combination of the two increases that conversion rate, you know, just a, as um, a general statement there. Uh, so email messages, again, they're invited by their interests. So they've opted into these messages. That's why this nurture is even happening. They've invited the contact. It's triggered by their actions and it's simple and easy to opt out. So email messages, you know, you want to give people an opportunity to opt out of contact as well. All right. Uh, a quick note here. I'm just reinforcing this. A contact or a lead, whatever you call the person in your database, you you always want to update them with the campaign, the interest, and other criteria. Okay, so if someone attends a free webinar on a specific topic or a free event on a specific topic, you want to capture that information because over time, what you'll do is you'll build a, a profile of this person. They may or may not become a member, but what you're doing is you're collecting information on their interests. Um, and the, the member funnel idea, I mean, as a, as a general idea, you're doing this in a number of different campaigns. It's not just one funnel for your events. If there's going to be a funnel for your newsletter, there's going to be a funnel for your um, free webinars, maybe there's an ebook. So you will have several different um, funnels happening. OK. And then we convert. All right. Uh, so they become a member. Uh, they click on an email, they go to the landing page and they see some sort of or they see some sort of personalized offer. You know, if you join today, you can get X percent off. Click this link. OK, uh, and here's an example here from this organization giving people different levels. Now, what's brilliant about this model, these different levels of uh, membership 
is that when someone joins this, uh, the lowest level here for $10, right, for one year, $10 a year, this person is very, very different from someone who's a Facebook fan, okay? So uh, it's only $10, right? But this person, what's more important is that this person has proven that they are they are interested in the organization, the association, and they are willing to take out their credit card and sign up as a member, right? Um, yes, there is a big distance between $100 and 10, but this is a very, very powerful audience that we can start targeting with email messages, eventually promoting and uh, kind of upgrading that membership to you know different levels, okay? And then, uh, so what makes people buy a membership? <clears throat> Relevant offers, demonstrated value and trust that's going to happen during that nurture phase and you've got to make sure that it's a painless process to become a member right if they download a free resource and then they get a few emails and then they get this really great offer become a member today they're motivated but then they can't really do it that easily that's where we're going to hurt ourselves so the con conversion uh, points are going to be really critical and i'll get into that in a little bit and then at the end we partner right now, I have a picture of a brain here simply because really that's what we're dealing with in this whole process, okay? So if they decide to sign up as a member and they get value, naturally they're going to want to tell their friends about this. This happens as a matter of course, and this is why word of mouth marketing is the most powerful form of marketing, and the funnel kind of leverages that actually. So we're doing two things from a 50,000-foot level. We're doing two things. We're identifying the right people that are interested in our organization, we're, tell, we're sending them very specific messages in the nurture phase. We're nurturing that interest. We're converting folks. And then the newly converted, we're turning them into spokespeople or partners or super fans, whatever you, you want to refer to them as. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to get into the little, a little bit more detail on each phase and what you need for to build this funnel. Um, Lori, are there any, should we pause right now or? Yeah, I think we should take a quick pause. A okay, bunch of questions came in there. Awesome. Um, so let's see. Uh, so on the on the nurture phase of things, how how many emails or how often is it considered appropriate to send something during that? Um, that's a really great question, and actually, I'm going to cover that. There's a drip campaign example I have, so I'm going to show, talk about that in a little bit. But you should always Great. send an, uh, an email right away. So when someone signs up for your event or your free event or a free webinar or downloads an ebook, they should always get an email right away. And obviously at least one more email promote, um, following up on that and promoting your um, becoming a member. Great. Yeah. And someone was asking about the drip campaign, but we'll, we'll get into that. Oh, and cool. then, so maybe one more, uh, one or two more quick question. So, so what would you consider, uh, I mean, you talked about events and, and just as a um, context, everyone, we asked John to talk about a membership funnel, but you can apply this to donors or volunteers. It's the same kind of thing. Hmm. Um, what would you, what would you consider uh, the, the top three nurture tools? Like would it be an ebook or uh, an event or, or what, what do you think works best? Okay, so the thing that works best is actually something that's very close to what they're going to be getting as a member, okay? So in other words, uh, you don't want to say, hey, uh, here's an Amazon, you know, if you give us your name and email, we'll give you an Amazon gift card. Great. You're going to build an email list full of people that want an Amazon gift card. They're totally unqualified, right? But rather, if the offer is, hey, attend this free event and meet other cool members or attend this webinar on this super specific topic that you can learn much more about in, you know, if you become a member. But uh, as a non-member, you're still going to get tremendous value. So it has to relate. That's the key thing. It has to be almost a sample. Like I said, at Trader, the Trader Joe's example, hey, do you want some a sample crab cake? Oh, sure. What are you trying to do? You're trying to sell crab cakes, so you give away a sample crab cakes. It's the same, same similar idea. Yeah, that's really great advice. Um, there, there's tons of other great questions here, but I think we should keep going, and everyone just keep putting them in chat, and we'll, we'll have some more Q&A time at the end. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I think many other questions might be answered just as we go along, but this today is really designed to build a process about the plan, basically the plan. Uh, certainly, we, we're going to answer a lot of nitty-gritty questions as well. Um, so uh, let's talk about building the member funnel. 
Um, and we're going to go through this uh, from left to right. So instead of from top to bottom, like the funnel is from top to bottom, we have, again, capture, nurture, convert, partner. We're going to go from left to right. All right. And we're going to talk about a free webinar or a free event as an example. So Jane becomes aware of a free webinar and she registers to attend. Great. She's excited about this webinar. She received personalized email messages. And this is what's so powerful today about email marketing tools uh, and, uh, and tools like Wild Apricot is that you can send personalized messages based on how people have joined your list. You know, if they sign up for a free webinar and they've been tagged as such in the contact record, then of course they're going to receive an email that says, hey, thanks for signing up for the free webinar. Here's what you're going to get. Um, they get that email. And Jane, um, so, so during the nurture phase, she's receiving maybe a couple emails about uh, saying thank you. Maybe there's an offer to join as a member, some value, maybe a member story. It may be, it's not, it's not one email. It's maybe not two emails. There might be three emails over the course of say five days. Um, you know, just, uh, and I'll show you one quick example. Uh, and then eventually, you know, Jane decides to become a member. Uh, and again, as I said before, the reason why these are getting smaller as time goes on is because in a sense, you're losing people. That's one way you could think about it. The other way you can think about it is you're just simply identifying the right people. And with the group that initially said, yes, we want to attend the free webinar, you know, a smaller percent of them are actually going to take that next step and become a member. And of course, Jane, after she joins, she has a great experience and she decides to share um, the organization with her friends. Obviously, you want to prompt her to share. Right. So, hey, Jane, we know you're really happy with your membership. We see you logging in all the time or we we've you've been at a few events. Um, why not share this um, uh, this membership with your friends? OK. And you can offer some incentives around that as well. All right. So there are five parts of every member funnel. And I'm going to talk about each one of these in, in just a moment. Uh, there's the thank you page. We have to build a thank you page. Um, we have to come up with some sort of incentive, a free offer, something that's going to be valuable to them, right? And, and a free offer could be anything like a newsletter, joining our monthly newsletter, um, getting a, an e-course, um, downloading an e-book, attending a free webinar, um, or coming to an event, a free event, right? So there's some sort of value that you're going to have to put out there like a carrot in order for people to, to just begin the journey down the funnel. There's our landing page, which really will um, decide how effectively we're going to convert visitors. So in other words, we might have, you know, a thousand people going to the landing page to sign up as a member. And if only five people sign up out of the thousand, we know that we have some issues there. And I'll get into that in just a second. And then we have our email messages, right? Someone uh, decides to sign up for that free webinar and they're gonna receive a series of emails. So we have to write these email messages and we have to consider other marketing as well, okay? Uh, so some of the uh, examples here aren't necessarily associations, but I'm showing you just as a, uh, just to have an example of what it might look like. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a thank you page, a thank you slash sharing page. Now the reason why this is important is twofold. One is um, when someone hits the thank you page, when someone completes their transaction and they arrive at the thank you page, you can count that as one conversion, okay, one person, right? So now in Google Analytics and in, in other web stats tools, we can start looking at, well, how many people saw the landing page? Great, a thousand. Uh, well, how many people saw the thank you page? A hundred. Okay, well, that's a 10% conversion rate. Is that good or bad? It really depends upon what our last conversion rate was, right? It's hard to say what the industry standard is, uh, but 10% in my experience is, is pretty good, okay? Uh, and then the other factor is the sharing, right? So the reason why we want to have something that prompts people to share your the, the um, membership with their friends is because that's when they're more likely to do it. Someone just signed up as a member. They're really excited. The honeymoon phase is just beginning. 
that's when they are very likely to share that with their friends, and especially right after they make that uh, decision to join, right? So right when they join, make sure at some point, very soon, preferably on the thank you page, uh, encourage people to share the membership with their friends, okay? You know, this may not apply to every organization. Uh, so, for example, a, uh, an association for chiropractors probably won't tell other Facebook friends, hey, you should join this association of chiropractors, you know? So it does depend upon the uh, organization. Um, so that, but that is the first step we want to do is we want to build that thank you page and, and keep it very simple and encourage people to share or take that next step, whatever that next step is. Uh, the second part is the free offer. So this is all about 100% about the carrot. What is the incentive? What are you going to give people that gets them over the hump to say, you know what, I want to learn a little bit more. I'm willing to give you my name and email. Um, and in exchange, you're going to let me see a free webinar or um, come to a free event or download this resource or register for some, uh, some physical event, okay? Uh, so, uh, and I have a bunch of examples of free offers. Uh, I've just kind of stated some of them, but in general, just to answer the, you know, the previous person's question was, whatever you're offering has to be almost like a sample of what you offer your members. That's the way to think about it. It really has to be a sample of what you're going to offer um, when they become a member. Okay, connection, here's all the, that's why I love a free event, a physical event where people come and meet people and current members are talking to prospective members. That's a really great opportunity because then one, one reason why people join um, as a member for associations or for most, really almost any sort of organization is because of the community, right? They get to meet other people like themselves and they might learn, and they certainly will learn really great things from these other people, right? And not, not to mention the professional um, connections that they might develop. And again, that depends upon the organization. So we have that free offer. We have to really come up with that and see what that is. The landing page. <clears throat> so the landing page um, should be obviously very simple. Um, I have a screenshot here, kind of a diagram of mobile. So the landing page should look beautiful on a smartphone, uh, an iPhone or an Android. You don't want to, um, you know, send an email saying, hey, here's this really cool offer. If you become a member by the end of the day or by the end of the week, someone is clicking on that and they go to your landing page and they say to themselves, geez, you know, I guess I, I, I might, I'll see if I can do this later on when I get home in front of a laptop, right? You've, you, you might have lost the moment. Right, you've lost that momentum. The moment was then, right? You know, expecting that they're going to come back when they get home on their laptop is kind of wishful thinking. Uh, so you want to um, explain what the benefits are of joining and make it really simple for them to join on the landing page. Okay, uh, and then the email messages. That's another part of this. Now, in terms of the email messages, this is where it gets a little. Um, a little bit more complex because what you're doing is you're writing a series of email messages. In the past, many of you, before even thinking about this idea, this, this different strategy, you might have said, well, we need members, so let's just send out a big email blast to all these people who aren't members, right? Uh, but the problem is, is that that's on your timeline. You're just simply kind of sending out email messages to everyone. The funnel idea is where people are opting into something. It's a free offer. Wow, I'm interested in this, this free sample. And they, in a sense, are kind of inviting you to send them email messages, right? They're giving you permission to send them messages. So the timeline is ultimately on the member's timeline, which is where you want the timeline, right? You don't want to have to worry about interrupting people. So you're going from interrupting people by doing email blasts to inviting people, right, to receive your messages. Um, so what does a drip campaign look like? Um, uh, first of all, when someone does take action, uh, you know, they decide to register for an event, a free webinar, whatever it might be, um, it's always a good idea to follow up immediately, okay? So whatever they do, you always want to follow up and tell them what's next. Okay. Now the example I he have here is around a petition. 
Uh, but it's the same idea. It really will work for any sort of situation in terms of a drip campaign. Okay. So the, the example that I mentioned before was signing up for a free webinar. Okay. This, this example here is they're signing a petition. It's really the same idea. Okay. Uh, so a drip campaign looks like this. This is an example of one. So someone signs this petition and right away they receive an, a message that says, thank you for signing the petition. Here's more information about this topic or this cause. In this case, it's a horse and share, right? So learn more and share. That's what a person immediately signing a petition, that's what the most likely action is. And when you're designing your drip campaign, by the way, the series of messages, you always have to think, what's the action that people are most likely to take? So if they sign the petition, probably the next action, you know, you could ask them to make a donation, but you might be a little bit more successful in asking them to share the campaign with their friends, right? So now they have more invested. They have a little bit more invested. A couple of days after that, you can ask them, you can present some sort of offer. And then we're just saying donate now. You know, you can put, put an end to the horse abuse. Uh, thanks for signing the petition. Here's what else you can do, right? We know that you care about this issue. Here's what else you can do, okay? And then we have another email message in this example. So a matching donor has come forward and they're willing to match dollar for dollar up to X a number of dollars. Uh, but only until this date, you know, so there's some sort of urgency in encouraging people to join now. And eventually they do, you know, many of them will join. Okay. So we write our messages, right? We have to write out the, each message in the series, always asking ourselves, what is the action that people are most likely to take? Okay. And then we simply schedule these days uh, and we can, um, let me just talk about the benefits. Uh, so in terms of benefits, you're going to drive a lot more traffic to that landing page, right? So instead of just hoping and praying that someone will visit your website and somehow click on join as a member, you know, that's, that's kind of wishful thinking, right? It's better to be able to control the message in a sense, having them opting in for something for free. And then you're automatically sending them, you get to send them a few messages, a few links to your website, a few chances to ask them to become a member, right? But and nonetheless, is this gonna drive a lot more traffic to that landing page? We're gonna nurture secondary actions as well. By secondary actions, I just mean actions like um, sharing the campaign, um, any sort of follow-up actions. Uh, and the great thing about a drip campaign is that you can set it and forget it. Um, now, of course, this is a, you know, in the interest of time, I'm not going to, you know, dive down too, too detailed into this, but you can create uh, more complex drip campaigns. So for example, you can send emails, uh, some, some solutions allow you to send emails based on how they've responded to prior messages. So let's say that uh, someone signs the petition, they receive message one, but they don't open it. Well, if they don't open it, they're gonna receive a different message than if they did open that message. Okay, so you can get pretty granular in terms of the cause and effect of the messages that are going out, okay? And then the last part of the funnel is uh, other marketing. Um, so in terms of other marketing, uh, what we're looking at now is we're gonna use all of our marketing efforts to really put people at the top of the funnel, even our existing email list, right? So don't forget, your current members, they're the ones who are probably your biggest spokespeople. So we want to send out emails to our current members and say, hey, here's this great resource for you, right? And get them going at the top of the funnel as well. Of course, we're going to, um, you know, configure those messages so that they're not being sold. We don't want to try and sell them a membership. So they're going down a different path, okay? Um, the last, uh, well, actually just one more thing I want to show you about a funnel. <clears throat> so this, the only downside with a funnel <clears throat> is this. Uh, it it, it um, kind of conveys this idea, it's a mistaken belief or mistaken idea that people go from one end and they go out the bottom and that's it. Very clean, very clean process. But we have to understand that in the day of, days of social media, Someone who's being in the nurture phase, receiving those emails after recently signing up for a webinar, many of those folks are also following you on Facebook and Twitter. And so their interest is kind of 
getting greater, maybe they're losing interest. So this is a very dynamic process. You might even call it a vortex, right? So people are always at the top of the funnel in some ways, and they're coming down into the nurture phase. Current members who last year were really passionate about their membership, maybe this year they're, you know, they're kind of not really that interested or they have other issues going on. So the interest and where they're at in the funnel is always changing, okay? Um, so now the last topic here is measuring the funnel. So once we put together these components, and again, I'm just going to show you the components again, we're talking about our thank you page, our offer, right? And the offer isn't something physical. It's more of an idea, right? Um, it could, you know, free webinar. That's not a physical thing. It's just a free, it's an idea. And then we have our landing page, email messages, and then other marketing, okay? So uh, how are we going to measure our funnel? Um, we're going to look at a few different sets of metrics. And the great thing, I'll, I'll just um, go back to this image here, in terms of a funnel. So each one of these points, if we can increase the conversion rate, um, for example, in other words, the number of people that see our free webinar page, if we increase the percent of people who actually sign up, we're, we're, we're really making, we're kind of leveraging that all the way through the funnel, right? So if we increase our conversion rate here, capture, improve our email messages so that pe more people are opening them and clicking on those emails, if we improve our landing page so that the a higher percent of people that visit that landing page, they're actually signing up to be a member and so forth. So you can see each point, this is where measurement, you know, kind of measuring our funnel this is really where it, the measurement effort goes directly into our bank account, okay? We have consumption me metrics, engagement metrics, acquisition re metrics, nurture metrics, and conversion metrics. And I'm just going to go through each one of these very quickly in the interest of time. Uh, so in terms of uh, consumption metrics, this is really about awareness, so page views, unique visitors um, on Twitter, on Facebook, on your website, um, the time that they spend on your site. This is all Google Analytics, okay, or most of it is. Uh, we can also look at Facebook Insights, but we're looking at the very, very top of the funnel, which is basically about awareness, people seeing your content, becoming aware of it, maybe engaging with your content, you know, on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, but the capture phase is where, really where we're um, asking for their email address, okay? Um, so new subscribers, webinar registrants, and so forth. That's going to be email, right? And then the nurture phase is where we're looking at website visits, opens, and clicks. In the nurture phase, we're going to be looking at Google Analytics, how people are behaving on our landing page. And also we're going to look at our email messages. Let's say we have three or four email messages. We're going to look at the open rates and the click-through rates on those email messages. And our constant question is, how can we increase the open rate? How can we cl increase the click-through rate? How can we increase the conversion rate, even just a single percent, right? Because if we increase it just a single percent, it's going to impact the overall revenue that's, that that funnel is driving. So that is the end of my presentation. A couple more things before we open it up for Q&A. Uh, if you're interested, I do a lot of online training. Uh, and I actually have a number of courses that people can take self-paced as well. And I do a weekly training I call the Hump Day Coffee Break. Uh, this would be the top of my funnel. In, ter in terms of capturing people, they're interested. Oh, well, I'll attend this uh, hump day coffee break. Uh, but, but regardless, uh, it's basically a 15 minute training followed by 15 minute Q and A, and then we're done and everybody gets access to the archive recording. Okay. So with that, Lori, do you want to um, open it up for questions now?